Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. And today's guest is David Wilson. He is the head of strategic analysis group at Capgemini. David, welcome to the show. Hi, Devin. It's great to be back. I appreciate you joining us from India. It's great to have uh, a, a great international uh, connection today, uh, having a nice uh, Brit from uh, India on, on the show. But we're, we're thrilled to have you. Appreciate you staying up late to join us. Yeah, happy to be here. You have uh, recently, uh, your organization in partnership with RBC Wealth Management, uh, published a report about uh, kind of the trends in uh, high net worth individual wealth management. And there are some interesting implications as regards social impact in that report. And, and you shared with me in advance three key points. And I wanted to just talk through those with you. Your, your first point really directed at uh, wealth management advisors uh, was that uh, they need to be aware of social impact. Talk a little bit about what the report said and why you think that's such an important takeaway. Great. I think there's probably a a good starting point, which is just let me define social impact uh, so it's clear. We define social impact as an investment of time, money, or expertise uh, on the on the side of a high net worth individual aimed at generating a positive social impact with or without a financial benefit for that high net worth individual. Um, in terms of some context, you know, when I was on the show in 2014, we shared just how important social impact is to these high net worth individuals. Around 90% uh, of all of the high net worth individuals we interviewed said that it was important to them. So a very strong starting point. Now, what we did in our 2015 wealth report a year on was really talk about what is the, who do they look for, for advice on social impact uh, and kind of what are some of the areas uh, that they need that advice on. Uh, and three notable things came out for us. One is that it's a very fragmented landscape. They get advice on social impact currently from a wide range of uh, individuals, from family and friends, all the way through to various forms of professional advisors. Uh, the second key point was just around, you know, how well positioned wealth managers are uh, for, for, for more advice demand on the side of high net worth individuals. Clearly the most in demand, so more to do. And then third, we looked at some of the areas that firms and wealth managers can tackle that demand. But to answer your question, if we start at the, the first point, which is just the fragmented nature of demand, we see two clear groups. High net worth individuals go to their family and friends uh, about in equal measure as they go to their primary wealth manager. And those are the two groups who currently provide social impact the most. And it's fairly even around 31% uh, of all high net worth individuals globally get advice from these two kind of groups. It's so a little bit different. Interesting. How do you, if, if you're a wealth manager, how do you <clears throat> position yourself to become the go-to advisor for impact? Well, that's an excellent question. I think it gets to the straight to the heart of the matter. So I think if we look more broadly at what's happening in wealth management, uh, the whole industry is is in flux. You know, there's the ongoing issues with you know regulatory pressure, client behaviors as it relates to the fees and the the margins that firms have, and then on the other side, you've got the entrance of these new players such as robo advisors and others. So it fundamentally asks the question: What is the value proposition of a wealth manager or financial advisor? And our view is that they're moving much more up the value chain to be focused on holistic goals-based advice as opposed to investment management. And clearly within that goals-based advice, you've got to be able to talk about a client's philanthropic social impact needs. So there's a massive role for a wealth manager to play there. I think then the challenge is the expertise, the capability, the comfort level on the side of an advisor to be able to do that adequately. And that's one of the key challenges. It is really an interesting situation trying to figure out how to uh, incorporate or, as you say, uh, embed social impact discussions into your uh, proposals. How do you suggest that uh, wealth advisors, wealth managers 
uh, do that, to actually uh, institutionalize, if you will, uh, impact into their discussions with their uh, high net worth clients? Well, I think there's a, there's kind of a strategic vision and then there's some tactical things they can do. You know, on the one side, certainly need to just embed social impact as a form of policy almost into a, any client discussion, certainly at the prospecting stage, all the way through to just delivering uh, the service. Um, and I think the, the second element is around all the different tactical approaches they can take, clearly building, hiring in expertise, people who can have that kind of conversation, acknowledging that a wealth manager can't be a jack of all trades and go deep into every attribute related to social impact from solutions, tax, structuring, measuring the impact. Uh, but also there's other ways, you know, educating the client base and just helping them understand what's, what's available and out there, uh, all the way through to having on the investment side, the solutions, the, the funds, and the products that can kind of be taken off the shelf uh, on the more kind of socially responsible investing, environment, social and governance uh, kind of fund and stock selection. It seems to me that there is um, one of the implications of this trend is that more money will be moving toward uh, social impact. Uh, what's your take on that? How quickly do you think that that trend will grow, will move, will develop? So uh, another good question. On the one hand, you know, if, if I look, and again, taking a step back, 2008, because we also in the report look at the size of the high net worth individual population, anybody with 1 million US dollars or more in investable wealth. And then if I look at 2008 to the end of 2015, when we sized it last, we're about 70% or more above those levels in terms of the number of high net worth individuals and their financial wealth. So we've come a long way. There's an ever expanding group of people who have social impact as a priority. You know, I think the industry for its part has moved some over the last two years to recognize this demand, although not as far as it needs to go. And I'm glad you asked because we've got our 20th anniversary report coming out uh, this year. And that's where we're gonna look a little bit into actual flows of investment and, and you know, are they allocating more into this space? It, it, it is exciting for those of us who focus on it to see hints and, and suggestions that it is in fact growing. It's a little bit difficult to track what is still a, a relatively small uh, piece of the, uh, you know, investable asset pie. Uh, I think, I don't think anyone thinks it's over 1% yet. Uh, so there's a long way for true impact investments to go, but it's exciting to see the, the increasing interest in it. Um, I, I want to see if maybe for just one minute, you can put yourself in the shoes of an investor and think about how an investor who might be listening to the show today might uh, deal with a financial advisor to get uh, really to some actionable advice and to be able to, to take it beyond a first level discussion, actually get to the point where you can make some impact investments. Yeah, that's a, uh, an interesting one. So I suppose it starts, uh, it starts with kind of what are the, you know, what we saw when we did the analysis is that, you know, depending on certainly the region of the world, the demographic split, whether it's younger, older, female, male, um, and how you've made your wealth, you know, if you're an inheritor versus a business owner, all of these kind of drive the kind of social impact you're interested in. You know, in terms of causes, you know, we see causes around climate change, energy, uh, sustainability for those kind of younger high net worth individuals, and more around, you know, child welfare and health for the older set. So it's very multifaceted. You know, I think the key is to start the conversation with your advisor and make it clear that this is something that is fundamental to the client experience uh, and it's a need that needs to be met through it. Then the, it's on the advisor then to respond by working through their internal network within the firm and their external network uh, of you know, tax accountants, philanthropy experts to bring a solution to you. Otherwise, eventually the industry will catch up and you will be able to go somewhere else. You know, I think then on the other side, you know, it's also a question of are you as a client interested in 
getting a financial return for your social return, in which case you will err more towards things like building a portfolio of investments that happen to tie into your, your values from a social perspective, screening out certain sectors that don't interest you from a, an ethical perspective, or making sure you have certain stocks in your portfolio that are very geared towards kind of these macro trends that are important to our sustainability. If, if you're willing to forego the, the normal financial return, you'll kind of orient yourself more towards getting hands-on, you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur in your past life and you want to build sustainable water supply in a, in a kind of deprived part of the world. It won't be a financial return, but you'll make it a social investment that has a sustainability factor and can live on for many years. So it's very personal, uh, but it's very exciting just in terms of the range of options available to you. Yeah, you know, it is interesting, and I appreciate you sharing that perspective for us. I want to ask you just a couple of personal questions, if you if you don't mind, David. Uh, you are clearly a, a role model to many, and and I appreciate your enthusiasm for uh, social impact. Who do you look up to? Who inspires you? That's a great question. I think one of the things I've enjoyed the most uh, over the past, uh, I'd say, three or four years in covering this is the momentum we've got behind uh, private wealthy individuals really driving this forward. Whether it was the giving pledge that started the efforts of foundations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, but also just the, the volume of literature now we have on the topic, you know, obviously our report, but also books such as Philanthro Capitalism, the efforts you're making. You know, this is all exciting and I think inspiring to people who cover the sector. And you know, I think it's also important that, you know, Social impact isn't a new topic in, in, in many ways, but what's different now is the kind of global interconnected nature of the world. And it's allowing for much more focused, channeled, local impact to be made by these wealthy individuals. So I think, you know, that the wealthy get a lot of sticks sometimes in the news, but I think it's important also to recognize just how important it is to them and some of the efforts that are being made uh, at an industrial level, but also at the individual level. Interesting, interesting. I, I appreciate that uh, perspective. Now, uh, David, I, I wonder why it is that you have such a genuine interest in the social impact side of things. Uh, th there are lots of ways to make money in your business, uh, but clearly your interest in this is genuine. Why, why do you care about this? Well, I think I have the unique vantage point of having started my career being inside wealth management firms, working with advisor teams, and now being kind of so-called on the outside, covering the industry from a consulting perspective. And I think the, the, the key message is just a bit of concern. So we've seen the demand from the high net worth individual perspective. I think you've seen some, as I mentioned earlier, firms are focused on this now. They realize that it's important for their client base, but I think we've still made baby steps. So kind of my fundamental personal objective is to raise awareness so that the industry continues to, to move forward, which is what we've tried to do in the report uh, along with RBC Wealth Management. Fantastic. Now, the, the, the last question I want to put to you, we, we put to all of our guests, we, we, the thing that everyone who's watching today has in common is a desire to do more good. What impact hack, what suggestion, what tip can you give us to help us do more good? Well, it's going to be again for a wealth manager, but I think it's a, a critical one. So a lot of what we've talked about is very static, you know, have the conversation with your current client base. I think that's good, but you're, 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 you're not going to where the market's going to be. I think you've got to make sure these discussions are full household discussions because we're going through a wave of wealth transfer, whether it's with the baby boomers in the US or the, the first and second generation wealth creators in Asia, ultimately passing on wealth first to the spouse, then to the children. And we've seen that the, the differences in causes that are close to them and the way they want to go about social impact are very different intergenerationally. So you've got to have that conversation overall to make sure that one, from your personal selfish perspective as an advisor, you have good conversations with your clients, but more fundamentally for social impact, that that initiative that you decide upon is sustainable and is going to be standing the test of time across generations. Because the last thing you want is inheritance to happen and then that goes out the window and all of that hard work is gone. I hear you. I hear you. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us today. Before you go, David, tell people how they can get a copy of the report, how they can connect with you, how they can learn more about Capgemini and the research they've done on high net worth individuals. 
Yep, good question. I think three ways. Uh, our website for downloading the report is worldwealthreport.com. Uh, you can also contact me directly. I think my Twitter handle is, uh, is down at the bottom here. Uh, and then I also have a personal blog, thewealthconsultant.com, where I talk about this uh, in, a, in a personal capacity. So very happy to engage in those three areas. Fantastic. David, thank you very much for being with us today. We, we wish you every success in increasing the uh, excitement around impact investing. Thanks, David. Likewise. Right. Let's do some good. <laughs>